CyberChef is a web-based tool that allows cybersecurity professionals to quickly and easily analyze, decode, and transform data in various formats. And these are formats like Base64, AES, GZIP, XOR, AES, Binary, and so much more. And really what's so good about CyberChef is that it allows you to do this in a step-by-step -step recipe format where you can see all of it in real time, no operating system tools required. So there's only one thing left for us to do. Let's cook. Inside of your cryptography folder, you'll find an obfuscated code.txt file. And we'll come back to that a little bit later in the lab, but just keep it handy. In the meantime, go and open up a browser, go to google.com, and then make a search for CyberChef. And then we should see a GitHub link. Let's go ahead and click on that one right there. CyberChef was actually developed by the GCHQ, or Government Communications Headquarters of the United Kingdom. And this is their GitHub repository, and with it, we have a live demo that we can use. Select that demo link when you're ready. Now the interface for CyberChef is honestly really intuitive. You have these operations on the left-hand pane, and you can do various things like encode, decode, encrypt, decrypt, and so on. And so you drag these operations into the middle column to eventually build your recipe that achieves each of the operations in a step-by-step -step manner. So let's get some input inside of the top right and let's put in, let's cook. Now, what we need to do next is see if we can maybe reverse that as an example. If we type in reverse under the operations, we can drag that operation into our recipe and look at the bottom right, right away you can see it immediately reverses our input. That's pretty cool. Now maybe we want to base64 encode it. So we can type to base64, drag that onto the recipe, and now we have a reversed input that is also base64 encoded after it's been reversed. And it doesn't have to stop there, we can keep on going. We can maybe even convert this to octal now. So now we get that series of digits that almost looks like what we see inside of IP addresses. And it also works both ways. So let's go and copy that output that we have after three operations of this recipe with some encoding and obfuscation. And now let's clear the recipe and then paste that inside of the input. Now let's see if we can reverse it. So instead of doing this step by step, CyberChef actually has some intelligence to it. Notice that little wand. It says from Octal from Base64. Well, I'm going to go and click on that. And as I do, you can see it actually populates the recipe to some degree for us. And that's because CyberChef has a little bit of intelligence to it where it can perform some level of analysis based on what you've provided it and make its best guess at what levels of encryption or encoding or obfuscation might be in place. And then it'll try to populate the recipe for you to save you some time. And what's funny is the easiest one of just reverse text, it couldn't guess that, but it could guess base64 and octal. So let's go and put that reverse step back in and bring it back to its original state. All right, let's do something a little bit more challenging now. Remember that obfuscated code? Well, let's go back to that text file let's select all of it and let's bring it inside of the input section of CyberChef and then start working on it together. Cool, okay, so this must be base64, right? We see those two equal signs over there worth of padding. Let's go and grab a from base64 operation and drag it in the recipe. And that didn't work. So that's kind of interesting. And now we're seeing something that looks like it should be base64, but it's not working. So let's try something out here. Notice that if we highlight the selection of text over in the input column, it also reflects what we see in the output column. They're sort of tied together. But if we highlight all of it, there's something off. It's not registering those two equal signs. They're not being accounted for in the output those two equal signs suggest that there's padding. They're not actually characters. So we do have base64 here, but something's not right. However, something sort of stands out from the input and the output after a base64 operation. It looks like there's series of characters, even though they're not legible, they look the same. It looks like they were moved or changed in an order of operation. And so typically when you see multiple series of characters moved in the same way, that makes me think rotation. So possibly ROT13. 
So let's go and put a ROT13 operation before the base64 and see what happens. It looks like something happened, but we're still not sure. We can check with that little magic wand, and we can see it's saying gun zip. So it's actually suggesting that there's a zip action here as well, too. Let's run gunzip or gun zip, and there we go. So it actually did work. It actually did pick it up correctly. Thank you, Cyberchef. And well, this is clearly binary, so let's do a binary and run a from binary operation. Awesome. So this looks kind of interesting once again. We're seeing a lot of repetition of characters. However, there is a sneaky equal sign at the end, which could suggest base64. So let's try out another base64 operation and see. Aha, okay, so that's why. We have hex output. That's why those characters looked so weird. So we can do a from hex at this point. There it is. That's the original code, and that definitely looks suspicious to me. I mean, it's actually calling out to an evil code one and also trying to invoke Mimikatz and dump creds. And that's some crafty, malicious PowerShell code right there. So it's pretty amazing, right? How many layers that things can be obfuscated and encoded. But a tool like CyberChef really allows us to work through the process in real time and at a comfortable pace where we can stop, pause, analyze, and think about our next step again without any tools and it doesn't have to be about anything malicious you could just be using this to encode a bit of a secret message to send to a friend or maybe you could be trying to see how your input data looks like after several layers of encoding to be passed through some type of web application and maybe over to a database so all in all there's a lot of use cases it's really handy and this is just the tip of the iceberg with cyber chef you're definitely going to be using this tool when you're in the cybersecurity field.